What up, guys? Um, we have another community analysis today. I don't even remember which one this is. I think it's seven. I'm doing this in my bed, so bear with me. But we have a guy here, FD. He says he's a guy with a jack on your side. Before pointing out, we need to improve on some self critiquing and stats. I realize I need to remove my jacket. Um, okay. My footwork sucks. I feel like I almost immediately get into this bit stance like always. This is not a bad thing. You should be getting into the split stance always. Um, I gotta be a bit more loosey goosey. We'll see what he means by that. My opponent is a trained player, as you can see from the footwork, and I'm not. Um, so my footwork sucks, and like your opponent being a trained player, like these things are like all relative, right? Like, like a national player in comparison to like Victor Axelson, their footwork's gonna suck, right? So. Um, I wouldn't be so hard on yourself, so, and I would try and use, like, more positive words, like, I need to work on my footwork, or well, my opponent has trained more than me, something like that. I'm 5'6", my opponent is 6'3", this is irrelevant. Um, I can kind of see where you're going from this, though, like, you probably, it's going to have better reach than you, better angles, um, that kind of thing. And suggestion what camera view would be best to upload in the future would be great, too. Okay, let's go. All right. <sighs> Alright, so, um, camera view needs to be, like, way back. I can't even see, like, you know, this, <laughs> like, your back lines at all. So, I can't comment on their, um, length, on their clears, or lifts. So, way back, or a wider angle lens. So, it's this guy up here. What y'all doing? Oh. Sorry. Alright, let's um let's let's critique your stance here. So this is like holding the rack in the hand is like a stance you see a lot more singles from more, I guess, like neutral or defensive players. Um, with the main exception being Lee Chung Wei. Like, Lee Chung Wei made that famous. Um, Kenzo Bomoda does this as well. Um, but there's a few differences from what you're doing and what they do. One, the racket is higher. Like, so I also personally hold this um, or do this stance when I play singles. But, like, my racket head, for example, is, like, on my left shoulder. So, like, it's up higher. And also, you're not priming this back leg at all. Like, you're just, your weight is on your toes. Um, so you're not actually, sorry, you're not actually getting any benefit from doing this. Like, if, if, if it is a short serve, like, see like see how, like, your leg here is just moving like this? Um, that means you're, like, your body weight, you're not loading your calf muscle. So you're not able to get any, like, spring forward. Um if you um if they play a short serve also in this kind of stance your front leg needs to be bent a little bit as well um so like both legs need to be ready for either a front or either, either a short serve or a long serve okay hope that made sense but yeah see like here he does a long serve and um you're like just walking basically yeah like it, you're literally just there's no explosiveness because you're not able to get any explosiveness out of it. So you're just like walking back. And at this point, it's already probably like at your head height, maybe even behind you. Yeah, I can't tell the distance is bad. Okay, you're doing a long serve, sure. Alright, so you have the split stance down. You're now that it's more of like a triangle, but there there is no jump. Like if you like look, he he hits it here. Your feet are still on the ground, right? Your feet should have been like there should have been a little bounce here. Yeah. No, it's literally just boom. Oh shit, he hit it. And then now you're running back. So like, you in the literal sense, you have a split stance, yes. But there is no preparation step. 
if that makes sense. So the same thing here. All right, so let's let's see this. All right, but this is a good reply. But why are you stepping away? Um, you can't be doing this. If he plays a straight net shot, it's um, I, I've I've said this like a billion times in a bunch of other community analysis as well. It's a bad habit you need to get rid of quickly. Where if you play a net, you need to stay there until they actually hit it. Because if not, and you're like already moving back like this, and they play a short shot again, then you're going to have to run and get it. Uh, this is fine. Here I would have played a straight shot instead of a lift. So yeah, again the same thing here. You're like way too committed to this um, uh, this straight shot. Um, and the reason why I say way too committed is because like look how high he's taking this shot. Up here it's a lot easier for him to play across or straight, he has more options than if he if he were a bit later and he was taking it down here. Um, and again, you're just like split stance. Your feet are like just on the ground, no step, which is why you scramble for this shot. All right, so. On this here, a few things. One, you need to be taking it higher. This is way too low. So the opponent is not scared. Like he all he really needs to worry about is the lift. Because at this point, what are you gonna do? You're either gonna play a net or a lift. Like you can see like he hasn't really moved at all. Because he doesn't need to. Um two, on this um on this side, on the backhand side, you preferably wanna lift it with your backhand. Cause like you you see how your elbow is kind of like you're having to move your body out of the way to make room. It's a bit awkward to do a forehand lift on the backhand side like this. This is fine. Yeah, I think that was just footwork. Just play a straight net right there. Let's see what else we can fix. Yeah, I just need to be taking like bigger steps, lunging, just getting used to movement on the court, it looks like. So a few things. This was a better high lift or high serve. Like there was much more height on this one. I liked it a lot better. Um, I don't like this next shot here. You gotta like keep it. Like this is more of a game sense thing. If you're playing against a stronger opponent, right? Um, you need to play to your strengths. Um. So here, like if your smash is not that strong and you're playing against a stronger opponent, they're able to do stuff like this. Because like what you did was correct um, for the most part. Like if you play a cross smash like that, um, the most likely response is that straight reply, right? So like going this way is correct. 
But if you're playing against a stronger opponent and your smash is not as good, they're going to be able to do stuff like this to you. And like, as you said, like your footwork is not as good. Um, so like, you don't want to challenge your footwork um, if you don't have to. So the same thing here. Like, smashes are, they're a risk. Um, th because, yes, it's a fast shot, so it puts your opponent under pressure. But if they get the shot back, that shot is going to be really fast as well. So um, you have to ch choose when you want to smash carefully. And typically, on a good high serve, you don't want to smash. And the reason why is because the opponent is fully unbalanced. Um, they're fully prepared. Um, and it's a high serve, so it's like it's coming down vertically. So it's a bit harder to hit, and there's good distance on it. So typically, you'll want to do drops or clears instead. Or half smashes, um, which will give you enough time to get to the short shot. Because like right here, yeah, that's just gonna keep happening, and you're just gonna tire yourself out. That was good. That was good um, luck. Bad luck. Or like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Good line? Good accuracy. Um, for this shot here, you want to keep running. You don't want to like just walk. You want to like, if you think it's out, you still chase the ball. Um, and you give yourself that, that ability to hit it at the last moment in case you're wrong. You don't like do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would have played. Alright, so. Let's break this rally down. So here. I don't know if that was a half smash or just a, it was just a good body smash, but this was better. Um, you, you forced a weaker reply from them. This is good. Here, I would have played a straight net. Or a straight lift. Because he's already in this corner. So like if you put it in there, it's it's easier for him. And like look where you are. After this shot, you're you're again way, you're way too committed to the straight, right? And he's shown you in the past that he's able to play the cross, um, from the late forehand shot. So you need to be a bit more centered here. Which is why again like you're scrambling here. And then also. Here in this shot, sorry, sorry, not this shot, sorry, this shot. This is a good recovery shot, but you don't need to be coming back to the middle. You need to be going straight because likely the only shots here are going to be um, like a straight, straight, a straight net or a straight lift. Of course, that's not always true. Sometimes we're going to play cross, and that just comes down to footwork as well. Good. You need to be a bit more quicker. See, like, so I notice here. This is a decent drop, actually. A little bit more pace, but, like, at this skill level, it's quite good. But as you can see here, you're kind of, like, just, like, walking. Like, okay, what is he going to do? You need to be, like, moving at the same speed. Um, and you need to assume that they're going to play the straight shot. Because any other shot, you have a lot more time to get to, so... So yeah, again, same thing. Um, especially in the backhand when you're already under pressure, you shouldn't be playing fast shots. You need to be playing either a drop um, or a clear. This was like a half back smash, if you will. And like, look how easy it is for him to get. Like, he's already, um, if we can see, he's already in midcourt. Like, he's already expecting you to play this shot. And like, well, he just, like, he doesn't really move. He take he like puts his foot down and he stretches his arm out. And you just made your life way harder. 
So, like, next time, try and aim for these lines, is what I'm saying. Or play it clear. So, yeah, um, again, same thing. You play a cross net. And then you immediately step away. So, you know, anytime that he's going to play a net, like, you're super off guard here. Don't be don't use your backhand if you can help it. Good. Good. Yeah, here I would have tried I would have gone around used your um forehand shot, not your backhand here. Here, not bad defense. Here, I would have played it straight. Like he he has the same problem as you. Like he's leaving this side open, so why play the cross? Make his life difficult. Make him stretch. Play it straight. Nice work getting this back. And there again, don't use the backhand. Like get behind it. Better shot, better shot. It just needs a little bit of angle. You're like hitting it as hard as you can, but um, with no respect to angle. So like that goes out. You need to be like taking a little bit power off and adding a lot more angle. Because that would have been a winner. Oh, it was in. Never mind. But still, angle would have been better. That would have been my critique there. Mmm, nice, nice. Yeah, you did everything you could. Not bad, not bad. A little bit more anticipation. If you got into the shot a bit earlier, might have been a different story. Nice. Not bad, not bad. I would play a I would have played a net here. Um, I could have I would have also been patient, maybe played a drop or a clear here as well. Cause like you know, he's played a lift to the middle. Um he's cut off your angles. And he's showing in the past he can get your smashes back. So maybe be a little bit more patient with your attack and throw in some more drops and clears. Make him move around a bit. Like you said, he's taller, so drops are his weakness because like he has to bend down a lot more. Yeah, so... It's the same thing. Same thing. He's getting these smashes back. So, the fact he's he's able to play these cross defenses so easy on this side tells me a few things. One, either your smash needs work, or two, um, your prep in your smash, like before you're about to do smash, is really obvious, and all your other shots look way different. Um, also, in third, um, lack of variety. Um, so what I mean by lack of variety means, I mean, is like from this corner, are you doing any cross smashes? Are you doing any drops? Are you doing attack clears? Um, because like he's consistently getting these cross defenses down. Good job on you getting this back. So a few things. So good decision to attack the body here because it's a short lift. So it was, it was not a bad choice. Here, I would have just played another straight. Um, straight shot to help make it easier for you to cover. But why are you moving? Why are you moving back here? Like if he plays a straight, you have so far to run. Like you gotta, you gotta stay still, bro. Um, where were you? 
Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta play this. You play that shot right here. You gotta stay here, um, or even like take a step forward if after you play this short shot. Like it's really lucky that was out. Nice, nice. Yeah, so a few things. So here, he's purposely attacking your around the head shot because he knows that you're not committing the energy to get behind it on the forehand. So he's forcing your like weak backhand like this. Um, the act, the real, the rally actually ended here. Um, so again, like in the future. Um, don't use your backhand. Like for me personally, I've been training for about two years, and I haven't used my backhand until right about like now. And like in these two years, I've only done singles work. Um, and I think most coaches will tell you similarly. Like they don't like their players using their backhands until they get like quite good. Um, so like work on your footwork, work on around the head, and just like immediately or just try and like get rid of the backhand in the rear court because at this level it's just it's not doing you any favors especially to clear um i think you know if you're going to want to do anything make it be a drop good getting this back this is fine so, and again like you're um you're, you're just stepping back you're just too scared of the lifts because like you're in the right place this is the right place like look like it's here, right? And the the cross is coming like through you. Like you should be able to get this. Like like if you had to play it straight, this would have been a bit farther. I would have understood if you weren't able to get it. But like shit. Yeah, it's like it's right there, but Nice work. What happened here? Like these are easy drops to get to. Yeah, it, it looks like you're just reacting to the shot after he's already been played. So again, I won't try and I won't try and repeat myself too much, just like work on the split step. Not just the stance itself. The stance itself doesn't help. Yeah, again, he's just playing cross defense. So be a little bit more patient. Yeah, like just like that. Yeah, so same thing. Like you need, you should be able to get these shots without using the backhand. Um, well played here. Just like trying to vary it up, cause like once you get to a higher level, like just playing cross shots, it's not gonna work.
Looks like that was in. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. No, no, no. I'll just play the straight shot there. And the reason why I would have played a straight shot there is because um, you don't need to try and win the game in every shot, right? And especially at, like, this level and similar levels. Like, opponents are going to make – some, or not even – someone will make it a mistake eventually. So, like, you can play, like, just a very basic game and just get the shot over the net and just wait it out. Um, like, if you're just not technically capable to play a shot like that, then don't don't try it. Um, because, like, while this was, like, the most ideal shot, if you're not able to play it off, then it's technically not the most ideal shot. Um, the most ideal shot is the shot that puts the opponent under the most pressure, right? But only if you're able to play it. So, in this case, probably the straight net shot would have been the most ideal shot here. Because, like, if you had to play a straight and straight play a straight net, he's already late, so the, the lift is going to be short, so you can just smash it down on the next shot. Nice. Good variety. Okay, switching to the backhand. Yeah, so a few things here. So, he's over-anticipating your straights, which tells me you need more variety from this backhand corner. Like you did in the last time. You played a great cross um, smash, and it totally threw him off. But, like, again, you're playing... Uh, maybe your your stroke is too obvious. I can't comment on that because it's off-screen. But, like, um, he's just able to get all these shots from this corner. Maybe your drops need more pace. I can't quite tell. Yeah, so he's he's already in this corner. Like look. He's still here, right? Look at his feet. He hasn't really moved. Like his split step base position is quite far back. Uh, meaning he's just he's just waiting for you to clear it back. Cause like, you know, that was just like one step basically for him. So um you need to like try and pick up on these things, like um, is my opponent like adjusting my base position or their base position based on what I like to do? So for example, if you do like to play straight clears and you notice that in this situation your opponent is just waiting for it, you can't play a straight clear because they're just going to punish it like that. You need to move them out, make them stretch, so play a straight drop instead, for example. All right, so good things. It's a little bit better. You're making him reach it a lot lower. Here, I would have actually just played a cross lift over his head. All right, so um, the main takeaways are um. Don't focus too much on the stance. Focus more on the split step and, like, the explosiveness. Try and match your timing to where when you do your, your split step or your prep step, or your split jump, whatever you want to call it, you land and you push off the same moment or as close as you can um, to when the opponent hits the birdie. That is the optimal timing for that. Um, two, just get – just focus on around-the-head footwork. like. Don't try and play backhands at this level until you have a solid um, forehand shot selection fr from both sides, so from the forehand corner and the round hand corner. Then you can consider adding the backhand in back into your choices of shots. Three, um, what I told you about the stance earlier when receiving, like load both legs, front and back, so bend them both. Don't just you know lean forward because that's not it. Have your racket a bit higher. Take the shots a bit um, more aggressively. Um, if you play a net shot, 
don't move until they play a shot back. Because if you start moving backwards and they play a net, then you're under pressure and you've lost, you know, what advantage you have. Um, that's about it. Um, let me know if that helped. If you have any questions, I'm always like in the Discord, so hit me up.